Hey, it's Skylar, and welcome to Java Programming Lesson 7. Today we're going to talk about looping, which is one of my personal favorites, because I feel like once you understand looping, it really opens up the possibilities of what you can program. Where looping comes in handy is, suppose I asked you to print out Hello World three times. That'd be pretty easy. You could just copy and paste system.out.println Hello World three times. But then suppose I asked you to print it out 30,000 times maybe more. That would be a lot of copying and pasting. With looping, however, you could accomplish this task with only two lines of code. The two looping structures we're going to focus on today are the while loop and the for loop. The while loop, you can see here, looks and functions a little bit like an if statement. If we were to replace the while keyword with an if keyword, you can see here we would have an if statement that would run if x is less than 10. However, because we have a while loop, then what is inside of the curly braces will run as long as x is less than 10. So it will continue looping until x is greater than or equal to 10. Here's a quick example using a while loop so you can see what I mean. Here I make an integer x and set it equal to 0. Then while x is less than 10, I loop the two lines of code, printing out what x equals, and then increasing x by 1. Note there are two ways I can increase x by 1, by setting x equal to x plus 1, or saying x plus plus. So if I were to run this line of code, I would print out that x equals 0, then x equals 1, then x equals 2, all the way up till x equals 9. Because once x equals 10, 10 is not less than 10, and therefore it breaks out of the while loop. Now it's really important that we have the line increasing x inside of this while loop, because if we took that out, then x would never be greater than 10. x would always equal 0, so it would print out x equals 0 forever and ever and ever, and well, at least until your computer blows up. And this brings us to for loops, which, upon first impression, for loops look a little bit complicated. I think it's the semicolons inside of the parentheses. But, hopefully, you'll be able to see that for loops are actually just a certain type of while loop compressed into one line as this somewhat cluttered page shows. Now for loops can be broken up into three parts. The first part here is creating a variable x and setting it equal to zero. The second part is giving the condition just like we did inside of our while loop. So as long as x is less than 10, it will loop. Then the third part is where we can change our variable. Here I'm increasing it by one just like I did at the end of my while loop. So the three parts of that particular while loop I did before are all in one line. You can do them either way you'd like. If you prefer the while loop, you're welcome to do it. It'll do the exact same thing that this for loop is doing. And at this point, we should have at least a hazy idea of how looping works. So let's go do an example. So I have a new blank project here. And let's write a countdown program. So I'm going to make a new integer called x, set it equal to 3. And then while x is greater than or equal to 0, I want to loop. And what I want it to do is print out print out uh, 3, 2, 1, and then blast off or something like that. So I'll do something like that. So I'm just going to have it print out the number and then some ellipses, like dot, dot, dot after that. Um, but then on the last one, I want it to print out blast off. So when x equals 0, I want it to print out blast off, like that. And on every other one, I'll have it print out this. So you can see I'm using a, an if-else statement inside of my while loop. This looks good, but if I were to run it right now, huh, let's do it actually. If I run it right now, oh no, we're stuck in an infinite loop of 3, our countdown doesn't go down. So let's make it go down by doing x minus minus. And x minus minus is the same thing. It's kind of like x plus plus, except for we're counting backwards. It does the same thing as x equals x minus 1. So running this, 3, 2, 1, blast off. We can do the exact same thing we just did here using a for loop. Uh, we can, with a for loop, we don't need these lines. We can just say, for int x is equal to 3, so create the variable, and then the condition. We want to do this while x is greater than or equal to 0, 
and then we need to decrease x each iteration. So now, there we go, the same program using a for loop kind of condenses it all in one line. So running this now we get 3, 2, 1, blast off. Very good. This gives us the idea of how to use looping statements. Now I want to do a slightly more involved project here really quick. I'm going to write a main menu screen for like a text-based game or uh, any text-based menu. So to do this I need to make sure I import uh, my scanner here because I'm going to need to get input in from the user. So I'm going to make a scanner called input, make a new scanner like that. Then I'm going to have a while loop here. So I'm going to make a string called answer. I'm going to set it equal to zero. And that's where we're going to store your inputs in at. And now while your answer does not equal quit, I want to loop. Now, does not equal, you have to put an exclamation mark there. That's the, the not sign. So here I have a string called answer. I set it equal to nothing to start with. And then I say while it does not equal quit, we will loop. And now inside of this loop I'm going to put my main menu. I'm going to make big bar line just because I like my menus to look pretty. I'm going to make it, might as well make it look pretty. And then I'll print out your options. Options. One will be hello. Two will be quit. Yep. Super simple menu screen. You can either type in hello or quit. So now I need to get in the input from the user. So I'm going to say answer equals input dot next line just like we do to read in strings. So I'm going to store the string from the user into answer. Now right now if we were to run this, it prints our, our beautiful menu screen here. If I put in one or hello or anything else really, it does nothing until I type in quit. And then once you type in quit, it will break the while loop because it comes up here and it sees that it is in fact equal to quit so it breaks out. But now I also have the option of printing out hello. So I'm going to make an if statement here. If answer equals hello, oops, then I'm going to print out hello. <laughs> hello there. And I'll give him a smiley face. Yeah, positivity. So now when I run this, and if I type in hello, prints out hello there but then it continues giving them me the menu so there's one last thing I want to do is let's say I try to type hello but I accidentally get an extra L in there or something like that see it does nothing it doesn't tell me anything it just goes to the next part of the menu so what I want to do now is if you type in something that it does not understand then it will tell you that it was an invalid command so I'll do else if the answer does not equal quit, then I'll print out invalid command. Try again. So you can see if the answer equals hello it prints. Otherwise, if it does not equal hello and it does not equal quit, then it's not one of our two options, it's an invalid command. So using this, invalid command, try again, invalid, invalid, still invalid, I type in hello, it says hello there, and quit to quit. So we have a pretty simple, um, I, know, I guess it's really not that simple, it's kind of nifty though, little main menu screen that you can use, in fact I encourage you to use this and play with it and add things on because playing with it is how you're going to learn the very best. And this really concludes the lesson for today, thank you so much for tagging along. You're doing great, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.